engineers solving problems. All right, guys, you're in the engineering design process. In step five, you are exploring possibilities by funneling your ideas that you researched and generated through brainstorming and you sifted it through the criteria and constraints and you're left with a couple of ideas. Well, in step six, you've got to narrow that down to one choice. So how do we do that? Well, narrowing it down to one choice, we're gonna use what is called a design matrix. In this assignment, I'm actually gonna walk you through it so it's pretty easy, but you are also gonna make a design matrix for your paper airplane designs. You'll have to come up with some criteria that you need to meet or that you need to compare for this particular design. It might be the size of the wings. How much does it weigh? Stuff like that. <clears throat> but for today, I'm gonna make it easy on you. We're gonna compare some, at the time of this video, fairly modern cell phones. Now, you cannot have a bias using a design matrix. You can't say, oh, well, I'm an iPhone person. I want the iPhone or I'm Android. So I want one of these two, or this has two cameras. That's what I want. We are trying to purchase a cell phone for a college student, and that is gonna be the assignment. This is an example. You're gonna rate each of these features with a one to a five, one being terrible, five being the best. And so, at the end, you come up with the total, which should help you narrow your design down. It should take out some of the guesswork, some of the bias, because someone might wanna choose their idea instead of allowing the team to choose the best idea. Not everybody's gonna have the best ideas. So on a sheet of notebook paper, what you're gonna do is copy down this decision matrix chart. And we are going to use this chart. I've already worked out the screen sizes, the battery capacity in milliamp hours, the cost in US dollars, the memory at each model, you know, what did they offer? And then what kind of camera does it have? Because being a college student, you probably want to remember what happened. So with this, you can now take this information and you'll have to find this for your paper airplanes. Whatever criteria you pick over here, your features of your airplane, you're gonna have to make that decision on what you're gonna rate as a team. And a one is poor, five is best, and you can go anywhere in between. So let's start with something that we can measure, screen size. Well, the Google Pixel and the Samsung Note are both 6.3 inch screens. So we're gonna give these both a five. And a 6.1 is not much smaller, so we're gonna give that a four. It's not the same as this, so you see how as the numbers fall, so does the rating. All right, battery capacity. So 3,700 is more than 35, is way more than 2,942. Somehow I make, that makes me think that's not right, but we're gonna go five, four, three. All right, cost. Now cost is what is known as inversely proportional. So the higher the cost, the lower the rating. Whereas the higher these numbers are, the higher the rating, those are proportional. These are gonna be backwards. So let's start with a 650. A 650 is certainly gonna be a five. A 900 is way up there. We're gonna give this about a three and 950, I think we can make that one, we'll make that a two, because that's the most expensive phone. All right, memory, 64 gigs, these are proportional. So with our rating of a five, 64 gigs isn't that great. So let's start with the big one, 256 gigs. You can install anything on the Samsung Note. 128 gig, Meh, let's give that a three and let's give this one a one. 64 gig, at that point, 64 gigs is probably gonna give you some trouble as far as installing applications and storing your stuff. You'll have to utilize external storage for that. All right, last thing, camera. Megapixels is millions of pixels. This actually has two cameras, 
You could probably do 3D with it, I don't know. But I just know 16 megapixels is a five. Along with this, that's why we're giving it a five. We'll give this one a four, and I'm gonna give this one a two because 12 megapixels is pretty far off from 16 megapixels. And especially, it should have two cameras. Okay, so now when you have your, your options and features rated, now all you have to do is add them up for your total at the end. So we're gonna put the total down here. We have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 19. You could have as high as a 25. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Uh-oh. Houston, we have a problem. The expensivest phone wins. Uh, let's see now. Last one. 4, 5, 6, 7, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So you can see that the iPhone XR actually lost to the Samsung Note 10 the Samsung Note 10 doesn't have the best battery, it doesn't have the best cost, but it wins with memory, a decent camera, and a pretty decent screen size. So that's how it won. Now, let's say that you didn't have $950, you only had $900. Well, you could, if this one didn't work and something happened to your budget, you could drop down to this one. It still serves most of our purpose. Give you a better camera, but worse mileage on your memory. So this is how the decision matrix is used to take the bias out. Because if it were me, I probably would have went with the Google Pixel. If it was somebody else who had a lot of iPads, iWatches, they may go for the iPhone. But this really narrows it down without bias or a prejudice from us as the decision makers. It uses this criteria and items that are measurable. These are all measurable quantities. They're all numbers in this in this respect. So these are things that you can judge. That is how a decision matrix is used to make a decision about whatever thing you need to make, whatever design you need to choose. That is how you go from step five in the engineering design process of exploring possibilities into choosing one avenue one choice. You can only make one choice here. You pick one phone for that college student. Um, this is a mistake, so ignore that. I'll erase that later um, in your homework. I just realized that was up there. Um, so this decision matrix helps you to narrow it down to one design. You have to select one approach.